everyone, 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 everyone has a story. Everyone has a story. This is my sickle cell story. My name is Andre Fritz Anthony Lewis Saint. I was born in Haiti. I'm a father of four children and two of my children has sickle cell. One has the SS, the other one has the SC. Um, living with sickle cell has been a very difficult situation. At the age of nine years old, I found out that I had sickle cell. And as a young child, not knowing what it is, and experiencing that pain for the first time was extremely horrifying. Remember being at a beach, out swimming, and all of a sudden came out the water, and it felt like somebody was hammering my leg in one spot on a continual basis and would not stop. The pain was relentless. And as I grew up and could not really get into certain types of sport because they told me I shouldn't run and do too many things, but I was very athletic, uh, got into sports anyway, um, excelled in them. But then when I became a, a mature young man, I was about 19 years old, um, I had to make a decision on how I was gonna live my life knowing that I had this disease and I had some limitations on things that I know I couldn't do. Um, early part of my life, I got involved with drugs. And at the age of 18, God got a hold of me. And by him grabbing a hold of me, my life changed. And no longer got involved with drugs and began to live a life that I think was very productive. And as I got older, about 27 years old, began to have children. And um, my son uh, was diagnosed with the SC disease. And then after that, uh, I had my daughter, which was diagnosed with the SS disease. I became a single parent, um, raising the children on my own, mother left. And as a father, and I knew that my children was getting ready to go through what I've already experienced it was horrifying because I was waiting for the moment, praying that that day never came. But because of what sickle cell is and what it does, you know, it's a pain that is relentless. Once it starts, it comes at will whenever it wants to. There is no particular thing that jars it or that stirs it up. It just happens. And when it happened, all you can do is brace yourself. And the reality of sickle cell, there is really no medication out there that really can help you. When you go to the hospital, all they can do is sedate you with drugs, give you IV fluid, and that's it. And no medication that they give you can really help you. All it does is try to minimize the pain or make you comfortable as you go through the process. Well, medically for me, um, I didn't really get involved with a lot of medication um, because once God delivered me from drugs, I purposed that I would not take no pain medication. And for years, no matter how bad the pain came, the only pain medication I would take was an ibuprofen 800 milligram. And I would drink a lot of fluid and I would always eat healthy. And so for me, I didn't really get too involved um, with too much medication. Um, I just try to the best of my ability to, to live a healthy life. But now my daughter on the other sense, as I was talking about earlier, as a father, 
I knew that time was coming. And at our first crisis, it was heart wrenching to me knowing that I know exactly what she was going through. And as a father, didn't have the ability to do anything about it. And that was the first time I said to God, why us? Why my family? You know, why this helpless little girl got to go through this? And then I directed it to the Lord. I said, now, if I was God, she wouldn't have to go through it. And it was a very hard question that I had, but then I realized that God is sovereign. But here's one good thing for me. I think through sickle cell, he saved me. Because of sickle cell, I had no one to turn to. Doctors really don't have the answers. They're really practicing physicians. They're constantly trying to find resolutions or answers to sickle cell. And your only hope, your only source, you know, is that you do have a relationship with God because that's where your comfort will come in. The fact I was a born again believer, I believe that even with the sickle cell, I think it minimized a lot of the crisis because by me being a Christian, I wasn't drinking, I wasn't smoking, neither was I doing any drugs. And all those things there are a handicap, you know, to anyone's body that you would induce your body with those paraphernalias. And, and so it directed me to live in a better life and it helped me build my faith in God. I can remember one time being at home and the crisis hit after I became a Christian and my mom was like, come on, you got to go to the hospital. And the only thought in my mind, they get ready to hit me up with 75 Demerol, 25 Visceral. And that was one of the concoctions that they put together to help me out. And those were the things that I enjoyed when I did have sickle cell. Because there was a point that I became addicted to the drugs and I went looking for it by choice. And so now I'm a Christian, walked away from drugs and haven't touched no drugs. And this is like six months into Christianity. And I had to take a hold of faith. And I told my mom, I'm not going to the doctor. I said, I would rather suffer with the sickle cell before I go back to the hospital and shoot me up with the Demerol and I become addicted to drugs again. It was a hard choice for me to make. But that day, as I, I cried profusely, she called the ambulance and I was getting my shoes to put it on, the, on my feet and the doorbell rung. I kid you not. I jumped up. By the time I made it to the door, the pain stopped. Still went to the hospital for them to check me out, but they didn't shoot me up with Demerol. And from that time on, never experienced Demerol in vitriol again. You know, anything else happened from that point on was no more than an ibuprofen 900, uh, 800 milligram. And that's what helped me out. And you look at, at life, all right? I believe whatever a man think it, so that man is. If you believe you sick, you're gonna be sick. But if you believe you heal, now I'm gonna say this, and I'm not, this is not a contradiction to what I'm about to say. I believe that I'm healed so much that even if I go into a crisis, all right, I believe that just come to test my faith to say if I really believe that God did heal me, all right? I'm a firm believer. Scripture says this, he was wounded for my transgression, he was bruised for my iniquity, that the chastisement of my peace was on him, and by his stripe I was healed. And then he said, he spoke a word, and the word healed them all. Everything that's going to happen has already happened. And I believe when you begin to believe that God has already done it, the universe has got to line itself up to make sure you have what you need. Now, here's something that God did give me and that I begin to do. As crazy as this sound, I remember one day, because I'm heavily into foods, 
And I remember I was looking at this frog and this frog had this real yellow spot on it. And they said, man, that's a poisonous frog. It was fluorescent light. Well, later on, as I began to look at certain foods like mangoes, uh, watermelon, um, papayas, um, certain fruits, uh, what you call beets, those foods that are high in color like that, God told me that they have um, natural healing additives in them. And I begin to eat them. And I've allowed them to become part of my lifestyle. Now, I can't tell you the last time I went through a crisis, because it's been some time, but the one thing about sickle cell, it has many faces. It will show up in so many different ways, you know? And so different things begin to happen to me as I begin to mature and become, you know, older. It's like right now I'm battling uh, a back situation, which is not related to sickle cell. And then also AFib, which is directly not related to sickle cell, but it's a blood disorder. And now, is that directly from sickle cell? Who knows? I don't know. But the one thing about it and all of it, I've got a peace of mind. I've learned to manage the disease versus the disease overtaking me. If you're a child, I would say to you, learn to develop a relationship in God. I'm not trying to make this spiritual, but it is. All right? There is no medicine that has the ability to take away sickle cell, to really help out with sickle cell. Now, I know they've come up with some stuff, again, that will help you out. The answer to sickle cell is God, whether you're a child or whether you're an adult. And if you are an adult and you have a child with sickle cell, you as a parent, you know, if you don't have it or if you have got the trait and you've got a child with the disease, the first thing I would say, learn to know the response of sickle cell, what it does, the behavior of sickle cell so you can help your child out. Because even with my daughter, she had this situation that happened to her when she was about 12 years old. Um, she had what was called moye moye, the bleeding of the brain. And I got a phone call and they said to me, there's a 50-50 chance she may live or she might die. They had to do a surgery and her blood pressure was too low to do the surgery. And if they didn't do the surgery, she was definitely going to die. What do you do as a parent? Who do you call on? Not the Ghostbusters. You got to call on the Lord. I think we got a book that we read here at church and Mother Boy said, he is the master of every situation. Call on God and you'll get your answer. Everyone has a story. This is my sickle cell story. I was really young. I had to be around two or three when I first started experiencing it and learning about it also because my brother had it so I was able to look at him and learn what to do and what not to do at a very young age. Sickle cell disease means to me you know just abnormal blood cells that make it hard for oxygen to flow through so it makes it hard on my body which causes pain, but it doesn't limit my life. I didn't feel different, especially not growing up, I didn't feel different. I was always a part of, unless I was absent like from school or a function, but it never made me feel different than others. I asked God once, why did he cho choose me to go through such a thing? And I believe his answer was, was to keep you from a lot of things that was going on around in my environment. Because a lot of the times things would go on and I would be out of it due to the disease, due to being in the hospital or having to do care. And that was God's way of protecting me. Every time I need him, I have to call on his name. I relate mostly to the faith in God 
because going through the affliction in my body on a regular basis from young now to the age I am now, I have to have faith that he'll bring me through every test and trial that the disease brings on. Holding on to God's faith allowed me to go through a point in my life where I had back-to-back -back blood clots in my lungs. And if it wasn't for my faith in God, believing that he would bring me through through that hard time of not being able to breathe, not being able to move, not being able to get out of the bed, just to want to sit there and cry and it hurts. Holding on to his faith made me be able to come through it and not just give up. It gave me a more enlightened depth of sickle cell disease as of not just infliction, but as a test that comes into a testimony for me to be able to share with others that God is able to hold you through and take you through no matter what it is. God has changed my life because now at the age of 30, it's not hard for me to talk about sickle cell. Younger, I would hold it from other people because I thought it would take away relationships and people not being able to relate to me. But now they look at me even when I say it, they still see me as a person and they can see how strong God has made me to be able to go through it. Because a lot of God doesn't give it to everybody because everybody cannot go through that struggle. Grab a hold to God, hold on to his faith because he's worthy, he's unchanging. He'll hold you through every, every obstacle of it, through the crisis, through the pain, through the lonely moments, through the nights you want to cry and not tell anybody. He will hold you through it no matter what. My name is Mariah, and this is my sickle cell story. Everyone has a story. This is my sickle cell story. Everyone has a story. This is my sickle cell story. Everyone has a story. This is my sickle cell story. Sickle cell disease is when there's moon-shaped moon -shaped blood cells get stuck to your veins, and you get sick. I was four when I learned what sickle cell is. My daughter was in my wife's womb. She was actually diagnosed with a uh, increased heart rate, heartbeat. And we knew my wife was an at-risk pregnancy from that point. And when she was born and diagnosed with sickle cell disease, we had that on top of that. But when we took her to her first uh, time to see the hematologist, we also had to take her to the specialist for her heart rate. But when they saw her, they said that she did not have the increased heart rate. So that was the first time we knew that God would show up in our situation. The doctors told us uh, that she would have to be on penicillin, which is an antibiotic, uh, because people with sickle cell disease have a hard time fighting off um, uh, bacterial infections. So we, she had been on penicillin since the day of her birth. Uh, the doctors also told us that whenever she gets a fever, to go ahead and bring her in. Um, as most parents know, uh, children, especially infants, get fevers quite often, and it's not necessarily a means to bring them to the hospital. Usually it's teething or just the, the normal growth cycle an uh, infant goes through. However, with Mariah, we had to take special care but God showed up once again. Every time we took it to the doctor, it was never sickle cell related. They always discharged us that same night. But we were just following doctor's orders and giving her her medicine and doing everything in the natural that we were supposed to do. But in the spiritual, we continue to pray, seek God and have faith in God, knowing that one day she'll not only be healed, but that she wouldn't have to take any more of these medicines. A disease that is passed down from your parents and it turns your normal red blood cells into a crescent shape and it doesn't deliver the right oxygen that it needs. 
I feel very sad because the medicines and the shots that she takes, I know it's very painful for her. I, I pray and I believe in God and when I see her, I try to make the vid visits very pleasant and happy for her. When I pray to God, I pray with faith and believing that he can do what I'm praying for. Sickle cell means to me is that when your red blood cells turn crescent and it just messes with your body and gives you pain. When my sister gets sick, I feel worried and sad because I don't know what to do and how this is going to turn out. All I do is just pray. How I pray is that the first thing I do is that I, I thank the Lord for this day and then I tell him what the problem is and how I need help with it. Uh, when we moved to Indiana, she was actually two. Uh, she experienced her first pain crisis. We didn't quite understand what was going on. She kept crying and crying. At two years old, she wasn't uh, audible enough to, to speak her words, to tell us exactly what the problem was. She would hold her arm and, and indicate that's where the pain was. We took her in and the hematologist would tell us indeed she was having a pain crisis. So this was the first time we were actually hit face to face with sickle cell disease. From that time on, uh, I'd say about every three or four months, she would have a pain crisis to the point where we would have to take her into the hospital. Occasionally, she would have to be hospitalized and stay. They would give her um, intense pain medicine, Tylenol 2s, uh, Tylenol 3s, morphine. She's had morphine before. Um, one time, her blood count was so low that she had to get a blood transfusion. Uh, and this, is, this was very hard as a parent to see your child laying there on the hospital bed crying and you literally could not do anything for them other than pray. That was the only thing we could do. We brought in ministers from the church to come up to the hospital to pray for her. And, but there was nothing in the natural we could do for her. And this was very hard. Tell us a time when you got really sick. One time when I got really sick is when my spleen got sick and I had to get surgery. By the time she was four, she complained of an intense pain in her stomach. And we took her into the doctor and they said that her spleen had been enlarged. And in, in fact, she would need a splenectomy. She would need to have her spleen removed. And this was an intense time for us, for us as parents because we didn't quite understand why God would allow this. Why would God allow her to lose one of her organs? And at that time, we, we did not only, we didn't question God to the point where we didn't know if there was a God or why God allowed this to be, but we, we tried to pray, pray harder and just increase our faith and knowing that this was a part of God's plan. So she had her spleen taken out, the surgery went well, and she came out of it fine um, in, in, in relation to having the disease. But, I told you I was gonna be right here. I said, when you wake up, mommy and daddy's gonna be right there. You sleepy head? Yes. You thirsty? You want some water? Don't move, honey. Water out for you. No. Otherwise, we have fun together. She's my sister, and I love her, and I just hope God will heal her. When my sister has pain crisis, all I do is just pray for her and hope God will just heal her. And about a year and a half after having her spleen taken out, she had an intense pain crisis. And this would in fact be her last pain crisis that would require her to be hospitalized. But she was hospitalized for two weeks. And, it, and she once again had to have a blood transfusion. And it was at this hospitalization that our doctor, his, his name is Dr. Lazarus, in fact, he said that she could be on a drug called hydroxyurea. Now what hydroxyurea does is it increases your fetal hemoglobin. Your fetal hemoglobin does not have the sickle shape. Fetal hemoglobin is actually good blood. The problem is, as its name implies, you only have it while you're an infant or a fetus in the womb, um, which is why most children don't show uh, problems from sickle cell disease until they're 
uh, a little bit older. The disease has given, given me for more faith and it's very bad for her, but I don't know. I know it's bad, but it's, it's helping us to, to give it more faith so we can pray and believe and trust in God. She has been very happy and she hasn't been to the hospital in over a half a year, six months. It's been a great time for her. God has done his work on her. Since January of 2013, she hasn't been hospitalized again. So we just thank God. Our faith in God has grown. We actually wrote a book uh, telling her story and we just want everyone out there to know that there's hope. Uh, and if you have faith in God, that that's the only way that God, that that's the only way that you'll actually uh, be healed of this disease. God is a healer. And while the doctors may not diagnose you as healed or say that your blood is completely healed, we know that God can cleanse your blood and God can heal you. That's a personal testimony of mine and my family. Kids, if you are just like me, pray, hope, and God will do it.